What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. A few months ago I decided to make a tier list video for all of the weapons of Battlefield 2042. But, but since then, my experience with a lot of weapons has improved drastically. And I just played with a lot more weapons and it kind of feels like I have a better understanding of the weapons. That's one part of it. But another part is that we now have some new weapons that we didn't have back in the day. And they were not a part of that tier list. So with my own experience right now and with these new weapons, we've got a total of 63 weapons in Battlefield 2042 that we have all of them in this tier list. And we're going to take a look to see how good of a weapon all of these weapons are. So we've got five tiers, just like usual. We've got godlike tiers for weapons that are top tier. We've got menace tier for weapons that are exceptionally good, but not as good as the godlike weapons. We've got good weapons, which are pretty much a middle line here. Uh, we've got not bad weapons, which are just slightly better than being useless. And we have the worthless weapons that are pretty much uh, just useless. And I personally find them, let's say, just unattractive to play with. So that's all we have with 63 weapons for this tier list. So if you enjoyed the content, do make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel because there are a lot more videos coming your way and I don't want you to miss out on the future videos. So yeah, that one takes one click, go ahead and do that. So let's jump right into the video. So the first weapon we've got here is the PP2000. I always think that this weapon is a pretty solid SMG. I'm gonna give it a good tier here because it's not gonna be a menace, really, let's be honest. It's a solid SMG, but nowhere near the top two tiers. And the reason for that is that it's a vault SMG, first of all. And the vault weapons in 2042 are not really that competent. So that's the reason, because there are so many SMGs that are just literally better than PP2000. Moving on to Desert Eagle, I just can't give it anything but godlike. Because you guys know how strong this weapon is, especially with that fire rate and with the damage that this weapon deals. Uh, there's really no replacement for it. So I'm just going to give it a godlike tier. Alright, next one I've got the M16. For M16, I have no idea what to do, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the top three tiers. I'm not going to call it a menace because it really isn't, uh, but it definitely is a good weapon. So I'm just going to give it the good tier and move on. Okay, now we've got the AKS-74U. Uh, this weapon was not a very good SMG back in the day. However, it recently got some buffs and it really is a competent one right now. And you might even consider it a better option than the... PP 2000s, okay? Before that buff, it was really a worthless weapon. Let's be honest. But after that buff, it, this weapon is now a really competent SMG. We had some increases in fire rate and all that stuff. All in all, it is a pretty solid SMG right now. I'm gonna give it a good tier and move on. All right, we've got the XM8, which is an LMG. But believe it or not, this weapon is really, really strong. Apart from being a vault weapon, it really is way better than some of the LMGs. That's something exceptional, because vault weapons with the lack of attachment, they're not so strong. But this one is really an exception, and I'm just going to give it a menace tier. I do believe it deserves that. And yeah, let's just move on. Next up, we've got the M1911. I believe Battlefield 2042 kind of compels you to play a sidearm, which is either fast or, uh, let's say, has a pretty solid damage model. M1911 has a pretty solid damage model, but it's not really fast. And the fact that it's a slow firing weapon makes it not really a competent secondary weapon to have among all the secondary weapons that this game actually provides. So I believe it's not a really good choice to have as your sidearm, but I'm not going to give it a worthless one because it really isn't. It's actually a good sidearm, but it's not that good to be in the good tier. You guys probably get it. There are just so many sidearms that are really, really better than the M1911. That we're going to get to in just a few seconds. Next up, we've got the M240B. One of you guys once mentioned that the B in M240B stands for Bravo. And if you call it Bravo, it's going to be like more badass. So I promised that guy to call it the M240 Bravo. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, M240 Bravo. I do believe that it is a menace. Believe it or not, the damage model of this weapon really compensates for that lack of uh, fire rate. I do believe the fire rate is somewhere around 600 RPM. It's not much, but the damage is ridiculously high and it really shreds people. And that's completely independent of range. I can't just call it a good LMG because it's really more than that. So the menace tier is going to be just fine. Next up, we've got the MP9. So many people kind of overlook this weapon and call it trash, useless, things like that. But to be honest, this weapon has a drum mag 
it really deals a decent amount of damage. I know it's not like crazy amount of damage like so many SMGs. The fire rate is not like crazy, but it's kind of a middle line, so I can't give it anything less than good. So it is really a good SMG here. Next up, we've got the AM40. It's kind of like an SMG than an assault rifle uh, because the fire rate is really crazy and the weapon kind of lacks that ability to take down targets in longer ranges, but in close range, it's really a demon weapon. It's ridiculous how good this weapon is. However, it recently got a nerf. Before that nerf, I would call it a godlike weapon. But after that nerf, which was in damage department, the weapon is just a bit weaker now. But it's still a pretty solid AR. And I can't just give it good. It's really more than that. So I'm going to give it a menace tier right here. And just move on with it. People who have just a bit more experience with Battlefield 2042 know how much of a great AR this AM40 is. It's really great. It's really amazing, this weapon. All right, moving on to MP28. I do believe the MP28 is somewhat a better sidearm than M1911 because of the fire rate and uh, like more bullets per mag that this weapon has. So I'm just going to give it a good tier because it can't really make its way up to anywhere near menace or godlike. The weapon is solid, but the good tier is enough. In my opinion. Next up, we've got the A91. It's an assault rifle, a vault assault rifle that so many people overlook. And just like the MP9, this weapon is a good weapon in the hands of a pro. And I really disagree with people who say that this weapon is worthless. This weapon is kind of uh, chunky. You can't really play with it. The recoil, in my opinion, that's all BS. The weapon's recoil is pretty much decent. The damage is good. I believe the 800 RPM fire rate is also a great number in assault rifles. So I'm just not going to place it anywhere near not bad or worthless this weapon is good you guys gotta play with it get used to it you probably need 200 to 300 kills at least to get used to a weapon in battlefield 2042 but once you get used to it i do believe the a91 is a solid weapon after all next up we've got the aek 971 uh this weapon guys this weapon is a battlefield classic we all know that but apart from being a nostalgia for most of the battlefield players the aek in 2042 despite being a vault weapon, is really one of the best assault rifles out there, especially for close ranges. And I do believe it's somehow a better choice than some assault rifles that people always think that are overpowered. Like the VHX, in my opinion, can't even get close to AEK 971. That's my own experience. Maybe you guys disagree, but I do believe AEK is way ahead of anything like VHX. That's my experience. So I'm going to give it a menace here. Next up, we've got the AC-9. I do believe it's a godlike weapon, and I really want to leave it without any explanation. But you guys probably know that this weapon is really one of the best SMGs out there. Arguably the best SMG. Some people call it the K-30. In my opinion, the AC-9 is just a better weapon. Some people disagree, but that's my opinion. So I'm just going to give it a godlike tier. Next up, we've got the G36C or the GEW46, whatever that name is. Let's just call it the real name, G36C. This weapon is really crazy when it comes to TTK. I do believe it's the fastest killing AR in under 10 meters in the whole game. That's really fascinating how fast a weapon can kill someone. Regardless of having like a pretty much mediocre fire rate, the damage model is so good that it pretty much compensates for that and makes this weapon a menace, guys. However, we have, we do have a godlike assault rifle right here, the RM68. The RM68 is still, to this day, one of the most overpowered weapons in Battlefield 2042. After all the nerfs, after all the balancing changes, this weapon is still one of the best assault rifles out there. It's got perfect fire rate with close combat ammo. You still can engage in longer ranges, even with close combat ammo, and you have a suppressor on the weapon that doesn't need to be detached, has literally no impact on muzzle velocity. And generally the weapon is really a complete package for an assault rifle. You, you can't want anything more than what the RM68 provides. Next up, we've got the Type 88 LMG. I don't think this weapon is worthless. Like that's not really what this weapon is, but I don't think it's a good weapon as well. So the not bad tier is the best place for this weapon. On bipods and for longer ranges, the weapon is really accurate, but in close range, in most of the scenarios, people will just defeat you in gunfights with almost any given weapon. Like, it's not its not really a skill issue, guys. Let's be honest. The weapon is just, it's not there. Something about that weapon is wrong. I don't really know what that is. Maybe it's a damage model, but so many people just run away from you 
with 2 HP, with 3 HP, with 4 HP, and they always kill you the same way. And honestly, there are so many better LMGs out there, so I give it a good tier, right? Next up is the RPT-31. This one is another LMG, but this one is really a menace. It's not like a godlike weapon. Honestly, I don't think it is, but it's really one of the best LMGs out there. The fire rate might actually hurt you. You can put up a shortened barrel to compensate for that just a little bit, but the damage model, guys, incredible. This weapon blows you away. It's really amazing how good this weapon is. If you can deal with that fire rate, things are gonna be pretty much in your favor. All right, next up, we've got the M44. So this weapon needs a lot of work and a lot of experience to be able to land those shots with. Especially in close range, this weapon is really slow. Arguably the slowest sidearm in the game. So you only have one shot in most of the scenarios. You either land that shot, get a kill, or you miss it and get killed. That's it. So if you are actually experienced with the weapon, you have a lot of kills with it, you probably got used to it. The weapon can be something good, but in most of the scenarios when you are like in a close combat situation and you run out of ammo, M44 can't really help you. And that's why I just can't give it a good tier here. I'm gonna give it a not bad and leave it at that. It's not a worthless weapon. It's a small sniper rifle if you put up the Raven 4X. But generally speaking, as a sidearm, you need something quick and this weapon is nowhere near quick. Next up, we get the P90. P90 is a good SMG. I'm not gonna give it a menace and I'm not gonna call it a not bad tier because it's really none of them. It's pre pretty much a middle line for SMGs and having 50 rounds per mag is really gonna make this SMG stand out, at least between vault weapons. I do believe the P90 is the best SMG out there, but I don't think any SMG in vault weapons can actually reach up anywhere above good tier. Good tier for P90 and let's move on. G57 now. G57 is literally a SMG in your pocket when your main weapon runs out of ammo. That's how I can describe this thing. So in my opinion, it really is a godlike weapon. It deserves to be called that because you have a burst firing mode. That burst fire turns this sidearm into an SMG, literally saves your life in so many situations and you can't just thank this weapon enough when it saves your life. Happened to me a lot, and I'm pretty sure you guys have experienced this as well. And that's why I'm going to give it a god tier. I'm pretty sure most of you guys can agree to that. But anyway, god tier for the G57. Let's move on. Okay, we've got the M5A3. So many of you guys like this weapon, and I don't think it's fair to call it a good AR. I do believe it's more than that. So I'm just going to give it a menace tier. Nowhere near godlike, let's be honest. The weapon isn't there. The weapon isn't really that good to be called a godlike, but it's a menace. Let's move on. Next up, we've got the NVK S22, a weapon that has no real world model. It's completely a fantasy built by the Nordvik company in the lower battlefield 2042, so it doesn't really exist in real life. This weapon has two barrels, but doesn't have any magazine. So you certainly have to just hand load this weapon every single time that it runs out of ammo. And that makes the reloading process taking so much time. That's what hurts this weapon. And because of that, I'm just going to give it a not bad tier. It's actually really pleasant to play with. But when it comes to reloading this weapon, the reloading is going to kill you. Literally, it, it is going to kill you because in the meantime, someone just jumps in front of you and starts shooting at you. And you're up there with your weapon, not loaded, not ready to shoot. And you're just going to die. Simple as that. Next up, we've got the, next up, next up we've got the ACWR. I'm really hesitant about picking good tier or menace tier for this weapon, but I do believe good tier is a better place for the ACWR. The ACR has a crazy good hipfire accuracy, but I do believe the recoil pattern somehow hurts this weapon in medium range. It, it really is a weapon for close range, but in close range, there are so many weapons that can excel this one. So good tier for the ACR, and let's move on. Next up, we've got the L9CZ. L9CZ is literally the last sidearm the Daphne 2042 ever got. And somehow this weapon is a pretty solid one when it comes to having a sidearm. The weapon is really fast firing. You can put a lot of rounds down range so fast. And that's why it makes this weapon a menace one. Next up, we've got the PF-51. This weapon has the same magazine as the P90. However, I believe it's really better than P90 as a secondary weapon. We need to be considering that this weapon is a secondary weapon. However, for a secondary weapon, it really is an SMG. So I'm going to give it a menace tier. This weapon, especially for people who play sniper rifles, DMRs, this weapon is like having an SMG in your pocket. It's really powerful. You get 51 bullets per mag 
which makes you able to kill two people rushing you without any problem. This is how good this weapon is. And I can't give it anywhere near good because it really is something better. Next up, we've got the BSVM. Of course, of course, this is a godlike weapon. Like, I, I, I don't really have anything to explain here. Okay, we've got the M39 Rafika. This weapon is a Call of Duty classic as well. Like the OG MW2, the M39 was a ridiculously good sidearm. However, in 2042, we have this weapon as a vault weapon from Battlefield Bad Company 2. And at first, I kind of didn't like it. But when you get used to it a bit more, when you literally use this weapon a bit more as a burst fire secondary weapon, it really delivers. I'm not going to call it a menace, but it is really a good sidearm. So good tier. Next up, we've got the AK-24. AK-24 has a lot of pros. Uh, let's say the drum mag, the damage model. But in my opinion, the fire rate kind of compensates for all of that. So I'm just going to give it a good tier and leave it at that. Next up, we have a pump action shotgun as a secondary weapon, the Super 500. This weapon was really a perfect secondary weapon before a ridiculous nerf to it. And now you barely see yourself one-shotting someone with this weapon. So I'm just going to give it a not bad tier, leave it at that, and move on. Next up, we've got the PKP. This weapon is literally my favorite LMG. It has a bipod and a grip at the same time, so you can use that at the same time. Really a great LMG. So I'm just going to give it a menace tier and move on. Next up, we've got the M60. M60 kind of hurts you a lot when you first start playing with it, because first... The fire rate is ridiculous, 580 RPM. And the recoil, the recoil kind of hits you bad when you first start playing this weapon. It really is a pleasant weapon to play with when you get used to it. Good tier, definitely. Next up, we've got the VCAR. There are just so many people overlooking this weapon. So many people. You have no idea how many people just sleep on this weapon for other DMRs. You have no idea. This weapon has a drum mag as well. You literally never run out of ammo. So it's a pretty solid DMR that works as a weapon for close to medium range. Not long ranges. Definitely a menace. Definitely. Next up, we've got the LCMG. A lot of people think that this weapon is one of the best LMGs, if not the best. I don't think like that. I really don't think it's that good of an LMG. However, it really is a good one. I'm gonna give it a good tier and leave it at that. Next up, we've got the AC-42. A burst fire weapon, apparently made in Russia. History of this weapon is nowhere to be found, but somewhere in real world, at least a prototype, somewhere in Russia it exists. Okay, not bad here because it's not a competent weapon in assault rifles at all. Next up, we've got the NTW. 50 stands for 50 cal. This weapon is an anti-material weapon and it one-shots people in almost any given range. And uh, the weapon is completely chunky. But if you can land those shots, this weapon is a one-shot kill. Just considering those things, I'm just going to give it a menace tier. Next up, we have the SWS-10. So many people call it the best sniper rifle in the game. Somehow, I do believe I know where these people come from. But playing with the DXR as well makes me wonder... Why do people really call this one the best one out there? But that has nothing to do with SWS being a pretty solid sniper rifle. It's actually a middle line for every single quality that you can have as a sniper. So I'm just going to give it a menace tier right here and move on. Next up, we've got the Rarsk MK4. This weapon, so many people use it as a sniper rifle. The, the muzzle velocity is nearly 7,000 meters per second. No bullet drop, nothing. Literally pinpoint accuracy. That's what this weapon is. With all that said, this weapon is really a godlike one. Next up, we've got the advances. I never felt connected with the advances. Never. So many people love it, but I do believe there are just better LMGs out there. And that makes me wonder why people really love it so much. I'm not going to call it a menace, but it definitely is a good LMG. So next up, we've got the MP44 handgun. So many people sleep on this weapon. Like, that's something that you really see in 2042. Good tier. So next up, we've got the PBX-45. So many of you actually love this weapon. So many of you think that it's better than AC-9. That's something I've heard. So I'm just going to give it a good tier and just leave it at that. It's not bad. That's all I can say about this weapon. Next up, we've got the RPK, another Vault LMG. And I do believe this weapon is also a good one. Right now, I'm just going to give it a good tier and just leave it at that. Next up, we've got the Sfar M. GL. That's just a ugly name for the infamous almighty Scar. And when you talk about Scar, 
In a video game, you can't give, call it anything less than godlike. And that's really the case also in 2042. Next up, we've got the GVT 4570. This weapon is worthless. Guys, let's be honest. Next up, we've got the Ghostmaker R10, the only crossbow in Battlefield 2042. So definitely a good weapon. And let's move on. Let's bring it here. All right, so the next weapon is the AK-5C, another Battlefield classic that made its way to Battlefield 2042. I would call it a menace here. Next up, we've got the G428, another DMR, actually the latest DMR that 2042 got. I do believe it's a good weapon. It's really a solid weapon, to be honest. All in all, the weapon can be called a menace, but it's just a bit better than good. But due to the lack of tears, I would say, I'm just gonna call it a good one and leave it at that. Next up, we've got the SVK. SVK is literally the best DMR in the game. So I'm just gonna give it a god tier. You guys could actually kill people with sniper rifles with this. The SCZ-3, the latest SMG that 2042 ever got. I do believe this weapon is really a good SMG. However, it's nowhere near being a godlike one. So I'm just going to call it a menace and leave it at that. Next up, we've got the K-30. Definitely, without any explanation, godlike. After that, we've got the MP-412 Rex. Definitely a faster firing version and a better version of the M-44. So I'm just going to call it a good one and leave it at that. Next up, we've got the MTAR-21. MTAR is a vault assault rifle. However, it really is a decent one. So, a menace. Definitely. Next up, we've got the infamous SVD Dragunov. This weapon in 2042, unfortunately, in my opinion, is a worthless weapon. Next up, we've got the M39 EMR. This weapon is a good one. Moving on, we've got the M416. M416 is another Battlefield classic. In 2042, I do believe the good tier is a good place for it. Next one, we've got the PP29. This is another weapon that without any explanation should be placed in the godlike tier. Next up, we've got the XCE Bar, a fast firing sniper rifle. So many people love this one, but I do believe the muzzle velocity really hurts this weapon, but I just can't call it a menace. So I'm just going to give it a good tier and move on. Next up, another shotgun, the only pump action shotgun that is a primary weapon in Battlefield 2042, the MCS 880. I do believe this weapon is a menace. And now we've got the Gold Magnum. I do believe the muzzle velocity on this weapon also hurts this a lot. Definitely a good one. And that's it. 12M Auto is the second full auto shotgun that we have in this tier list. And I do believe this one is a godlike weapon. Even with the recent nerfs to this weapon, it's still really one of the best weapons that you could pick for close combat. VHX D3. In my opinion, the VHX D3 is just a good assault rifle and nothing more. Next up, we've got the NVK secondary weapon. This weapon, in my opinion, is really solid. Pretty solid choice when it comes to a secondary weapon, so I'm just going to give it a good tier. And lastly, we've got the DXR-1. In my opinion, DXR is the best sniper rifle in the game. Literally no bullet drop. Shots above 400 meters are made completely easy for this weapon. So with all that said, all those compliments, I'm going to give it a godlike tier. The only problem this weapon has is being a, just a little bit slower, but the bullet drop, the muzzle velocity really compensate for that and really make this one a godlike weapon. So with all that said, today's tier list is now completed. It looks like something like this. You can pause the video if you want to check out every single weapon and hope you guys enjoyed and hope it was helpful. If you guys disagree with anything, if you think that some of these weapons can have a better place or they should be in a lower place, do make sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think because that will really matter. But for now, guys, thank you all for watching and until next time, stay cool.